often say he is appropriately named Senator Talent. What, a, what an extraordinary man. You're lucky to have had him as your senator. I wish he were your senator right now. Well, I, you know, it depends on which party. We have to make sure. But I, I wish he were replacing the Democrat with this, uh, this good Republican. This man knows how to get the job done. Yeah, please sit down. There, there are seats here. Wow. You guys are back. I'm sorry. Wish, well, way back there, though. Let's say hi to you. Thanks so much for being here. Appreciate the chance to spend a little time with you. It's good for you guys to be out today. Yeah. Be out here in the sunshine. I was in Miami this morning. It's warmer here than in Miami. <laughs> What's going on? What's going on in Missouri today? Now he kept on saying Missouri. How many here in this in this audience call it Missouri as opposed to Missouri? Okay. How many say Missouri like? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm in Missouri right now. I think we're going. I think we're going to Missouri a little later today, right? Yeah, we're going to be taking a trip over to Missouri. Um, you know, I'll, I'll tell you, it's, uh, it's such a thrill to get a chance to do what I get to do. I, I never imagined I'd be running for president of the United States. I, 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 uh, I, I spent my life in business, small business, and, and then the business got bigger, and then the Olympics. And, and somehow I, I backed into getting involved in politics because I care very deeply about people. I want to help. And, uh, and so I find myself running for President of the United States, and you would love it. I have to tell you, I wish you had the chance to do what I get to do. Because uh, I, I get to meet everyday Americans from all over the country. Not, not the people who are in the news every night. The people who are in the news, by and large, are doing strange or unusual things. And so, you know, you don't get a good sense of what, of what America is just by seeing us. You have, to see, you have to see the folks that are living the lives Americans live. And, uh, and as you do, you come away more inspired and more confident in our future. And more convinced, as Jim Talent just said, that the problem in America is not our people, it's not our churches, it's not our businesses, but it's our government. That they don't understand how America works. And, and I, I, I've seen this as I've gone across the country. I'll tell you, I, I was uh, in one place with a guy named Norm Byrne. Uh, on his wall, he had over a hundred different patents. Yes. That he had framed, bronze and framed in the wall. I said, where'd you go to engineering school? He said, I didn't. I said, where'd you get your degree, an undergraduate degree? He said, I didn't. No college degree, no engineering degree, and yet this great inventor of all sorts of electrical systems, just an entrepreneur, an innovator. And by virtue of his skill, why well, he's hired one of the people, the work for him. And then I met a guy named Bill Dobbin, an MD. And uh, he has a factory that makes casters. You know those rolling things you put at the bottom of things you're pushing around. He makes specialty casters. And uh, and I said, you know, what got you into this business? He said, well, I'm a medical doctor. And he said, I got tired of the malpractice and all the regulations. And, and, and he said, so my dad and I decided to start this caster business. And he employs a bunch of folks making these special casters. I, I just look around this country. I see entrepreneurs that are taking risks and saving their money and investing it in their little business and then hiring people and growing. It's what makes America the economic powerhouse we are. I, I was just, uh, I, just uh, I just sat with a few folks from right around here. Someone making uh, amplifiers for, uh, uh, for entertainers. Someone else who's got a landscaping business. Another person who's in teaching. Uh, another, uh, another individual who's in the bakery business, talking about their businesses and the, and the risks they've taken. All of them said that things are tough right now that under the Obama economy, it's been harder. And particularly with high gasoline prices. These gasoline prices are really crushing a lot of people because uh, folks have long distances to get to work. Uh, and small business often times uses a lot of energy in the bakery business. You're heating things up, that uses energy. You're delivering things with trucks, that uses energy. If you're in the landscape business, your equipment uses energy and your trucks use energy to get to the homes where you're mowing the lawns. And, uh, and so people are really, are really struggling. And at a time like this, that the president's looking around for someone to blame. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, it seems to be part of his nature. He's out of ideas, he's out of excuses, and in 2012, we're gonna get him out of office. Yeah. But, he, but he, he said something that, I think it was yesterday, he said, the reason we have high gasoline prices is and then he was seeking around. What could it be? What could it be? Now, I have some suggestions for him. Maybe it's related to the fact that you stopped drilling in the, uh, in the Gulf. Maybe yeah. it's related to the fact that 
Mr. President, that you were not drilling in Anwar. Maybe it's related to the fact that you said we couldn't get a pipeline in from Canada known as TESOL. Yeah. Those things affect gasoline prices long term. But, uh, but instead he came up with this. He said it's because Republican presidential candidates are, are talking in a very muscular way about Iran and their nuclear program. Now that's a pretty tough one to follow, all right? And, and, uh, and frankly, it's disappointing to have the President of the United States take a serious foreign policy issue, which is Iran, a, a the state sponsor of terror in the world, becoming nuclear, and trying to turn that into saying we're somehow responsible for high gasoline prices in this country. It is a, it's a real stretch, even for a guy who's gotten pretty good at making excuses. I, I wish, as a President, he would finally take responsibility.